Well, many Americans' financial lives have been upended by the pandemic. Some are finding themselves forced into retirement, or maybe they're retiring early. So how do we handle that and navigate these sudden changes that we've dealt with financially? And with me is the Chief Marketing Officer, Paul Tyler of Nassau Financial, uh, to kind of walk us through this a little bit. So, Paul, great to have you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you very much. So, my goodness, have you seen anything this disruptive to people's financial lives as this pandemic? No, you know, you you kind of look back on on uh, recent crises. You know, uh, you know, you think you know, nine nine eleven was was a war. You think of two thousand seven, two thousand eight, it was truly a financial crisis. It's like a. This is where we've almost seen seen both not a not a, a war against uh, uh, terrorists, but a war uh, a, a again a, a public health war, and uh, no, <laughs> and I'm I'm thinking you know you you, you look at the flu pandemic in in, in uh, 1918 19, I mean we certainly have lessons, but uh, it's, it's a different time and certainly a different economy. Absolutely, and. I don't think we still know how this is all going to play out in terms of how it's going to change society and whether they're going to go to an office again and all that. So, well, what are you seeing? Like, are, is the situation out there? Are you seeing a lot of people who lost their jobs and maybe they're, you know, 60 and like, what are you seeing? Yeah, I, th- I think that probably the most interesting group that we've been talking to are people who are on the cusp of retirement. And uh, again, th- this is a, a really to- completely different ca- type of crisis where, you know, if you're fortunate, you're able to go home, work from your your house, and uh, you know, other than uh, you know, shortening the commute, you're doing sort of the same business, getting paid the same. Other people, obviously, um, uh, you know, if you had a business that had anything to do with meeting in person, meeting in place, or traveling, uh, your your business has been utterly disrupted. Of course, you know, the longer this thing goes, the more it will touch more and more parts of our, our, our economy. So I think as people are pro- approaching, you know, in their, you know, early to late 50s, um, you're, you're really in sort of a danger zone here, um, which is you're, you're in, a, in a zone where, you know, if your job, your, your company uh, goes belly up, you lose your job, it's not going to be easy necessarily to replace your income uh, as quick as it would be if you were, you were in your 30s. So what do you do? Um, and and we, we've had a lot of questions, Jane, around, uh, you know, gee, I either got laid off, what do I do? What do I do with Mark Charman? Or I'm concerned uh, that I'm fine now, but what will happen six months from now? Mm-hmm. How do I think about retirement? Well, and, and they're at that age where they don't quite have Social Security yet. Um, maybe they haven't saved as much as they should. I mean, I'll count myself. No one has. Right. Yeah. I mean, no one has saved <laughs> Welcome enough. Welcome to life, right? None, none of us have saved as much as we should have. So what do you tell them to do? Well, I, I, I think it's some, some of the, the advice we give would be evergreen advice. Um, like, first of all, you, you really have to have a clear vision of what retirement will look like. And uh, uh, it, it's like well, a lot like telling a, a, a story uh, or, uh, you know, in, in the newspaper, the, the who, what, when, what, where, and why um, is incredibly important. I'd actually start with a why, which is what what's your purpose in retirement? Um, it, you know, is it that you want to get closer to family? Is it what you want to do something you never could do because you didn't have the time or you didn't have the energy? Um, who do you want to spend time with? And that, that will dictate a lot about what the the uh, things, activities you're going to be doing. Is, is there a palm tree out front? Is there grass? Is there a tree? But it's also, how many floors do I have to climb up? Because where you're going to be living now has is probably going to have to carry through through to your 70s. So I think the more, you know, and, and behavioral finance, you know, says this, the, the clearer, you know, Jane can imagine her future self being happier 20 years from now, more likely are you to do, to do the right things today. There's a huge demand for tech like data analysts and project managers and developers and things like that. I mean, is that realistic for somebody in their fifties? And and, and there's like kind of condensed classes on this. So you don't have to spend four years in college. I mean, would that be something somebody could do? for? No, uh, you know, listen, absolutely. Everybody's in a unique position. You know, some people don't want to learn new skills. Other people love them. Um, I think uh, there are tremendous opportunities. I've seen some incredible, uh, you know, pivots in people's small businesses. I've, everybody would love to put more money into their 401k, but what do you have? And 
at this point in time, I would say 401ks are actually doing pretty well. Um, it's remarkable. Uh, as you know, as you, you probably um, uh, track this on a regular basis, I think people thought the market was going to follow it. It hasn't. Now, will it? You know, if I knew it, Jane, I wouldn't be uh, working for an insurance company. <laughs> but it may be t- time to take some of the risk. Yeah, I think as you get to this time, questions you need to think about are, is it time to take a little bit of risk off the table? Now, um, very, you know, self-centeredly, we sell annuities. Annuities are very good risk way to take risk off out of the market. Now, you, obviously, your money is not going to grow as fast, potentially, as it would be in the market. But you've got guarantees that you've got a certain income in, in retirement. And we all live through what happened to the stock market in March and April. And that was very scary. And if you're, you know, about ready to retire, um, you know, that's keeps you up at night. So. Well, it, it, and it can, it's, uh, you know, um, behavioral finances call this the, uh, um, uh, th- this is, you know, tail risk in retirement. And I, I, I think if you actually look at the, the, the risk of the, uh, the risk of a drop in those last couple of years can have a very large impact when you're in a withdrawal phase. You know, it's one thing if you're 30 and you have, you know, you know, on average, the market's done great, but that, you know, average is over, a, you know, being in the market a five, 10 year period. Um, so as you get to the to later stages, you, you've got to sort of take a risk mindset. How do I, how do I protect myself? So one is market, think about your 401k, think about those nest egg, the nest egg you have, how do you, how much, how much do you hope it grows and how much risk do you want to take off the table in case things don't go uh, way as planned? I think emergency funds, um, you know, if you do lose your job and you do want to take a course like you're describing, because there are a lot of new jobs uh, coming out there, how are you going to pay for that? Um, do you need to sort of create a, a, a larger emergency fund in, in your uh, money market or your cash account. Well, and it's a very individualistic decision. You know, people have to decide, you know, what their financial situation is, what's their capacity for learning something new. Um, you know, would they be okay in, you know, kind of moving to a smaller, cheaper place? Exactly. You know? So you got to kind of think about all those things. So now you mentioned annuities. So I guess give me an, an explanation of what an annuity is and then who might one be appropriate for. Yeah. yeah for, first of all, Jane, it, it's if, if anybody doesn't know what an annuity is, you are in the vast majority of the population. Um um, the simplest way to explain it is annuity, you know, social, if, if you understand how social security is, social security is probably the most valuable annuity everybody owns. Um, if you put money into an account and you're going to get a payment stream forever. Now, annuities at their core, that, that that's what annuities are about. It's basically taking a pool of, of assets, but then sharing the risk, the mortality risk with a larger population. So we can actually be more... Insurance company, because we can pool risk, we're more efficient at taking $100,000 and turning it into your personal guaranteed income stream than you can ever do investing it on your own. Now, lots of varieties. It's com- it's, these are complicated products. They can't. Well, I wish they were simpler, but they range from simple savings products that you now they kind of look and behave like bank CDs, but they're not. They're insurance products. These annuities, very simple annuities, fixed. In, they're called you know fixed annuities. You give us anywhere from you know five thousand dollars to a million dollars. We will guarantee an interest rate for a certain period of time, three, four, five, six, seven years, and you will get a certain rate at the end of a end of a given period. To some of the more complex annuities, where you'll give us a larger sum of money, and we will guarantee that based on certain ages, when you decide to take an income stream. Here is what we will pay you forever. Well, thank you. I know a lot of people worried right now, and it's a good time to do some research. Spend it Saturday and Sunday and just look at all the options that you have. 